Evergrow Coin burned two, oh, not burned two million. They've burned forty-five billion tokens on average every day since the launch, and they've had two million total transfers. That that means that a hey, this rewards-based token has a lot of trading, a lot of trading happening or occurring and or occurring on their platform. That, and that's a nice thing. That's what you want from a rewards-based token. You don't want a rewards-based token that has no trading volume whatsoever. You want one that has had some trading volume. Um, yeah, that just has some trading volume. I was about to add on. I don't even have to add on. So now we're going to do a rough estimation and approximation of how much trading volume we've had in those last couple days, or how how many transfers we've had day to day, right? Because I think that's a safe thing to keep in mind, or it's not a safe thing to keep in mind, but it's an additional thing to keep in mind when you're going through your overall analysis of if Evergrow Coin is something you want to continue holding. We're going to divide by, so 365 times 2, that is 730. Uh-oh, I'm about to do math on that. 365 times 2. 730 we're going to add an extra 30 um or actually another 30 um because Evergo coin launched um back in september slash august area so we're going to add a couple days for the months so we're going to say 800 right that means that there was 2500 transfers a day we're going to basically say i know some people are going to be like that's not safe other people are going to be like you're stupid that's a safe approximation to make that is two thousand five hundred dollars that they have traded a day right that's pretty good on average on average now we've seen that's not the truest or not even that we've seen that's actually a fair estimation if we go to their chart which i'll do right now oops wrong tab you're about to see a tab open that doesn't need to be open. There we go. If we go and look at every day they've had trading action going on, and we're going to cut this down into a year because we don't need to go through the whole year. I mean, the whole all-time thing. <laughs> but you see the numbers. Look at the volume, the vol 24-hour um, pop-up that's coming out. That is saying that is the number of trading volume, or that's the total trading volume for the like daily for Evergrow coin, and it has never gone below ten thousand dollars. So, oh well, here we go. There we go. There we go. Five thousand, seven thousand. I'm trying to see if we got a twenty five hundred. So even on its worst day of trading, it hit seven thousand five hundred, and then five hundred, five thousand dollars. So oh there we go and then we got a three thousand three thousand two hundred i'm trying to find two thousand five hundred so that's nice now what i want to do now is say let's multiply that by two i think multiplying it by two is fair boom i mean four my fault four and we're basically saying we're going to have either higher or, or it's going to be an either and either and situation, right? Where it's not just we're going to have hot more transactions or more transfers and heavier numbers. It could also be a scenario where we have more transfers, not less heavier numbers or heavier numbers, less transfers. That's still ten thousand dollars a day. Still ten thousand dollars a day. And if that was to come, I think you could also state one could go on to state that whatever trading volume we had during this period would be ten X in the next Bitcoin having period. And if that's to come, you might see a day. Or you have over three hundred million dollars in trading volume. Now, is that a safe assumption? No. Could you could one make the assumption? Possibly. They could. Someone can make the argument because there's the hype that Pepe has had, 
and one could say that Evergrow coin is going to be able to have a hype similar to Pepe in the next Bitcoin halving period. And it could also be even stronger than Pepe because it's, also, it's going to have some utilities behind it as well. So that's a possibility. You also have the possibility of the Bitcoin dominance from year to year or from day to day. That's going to also be playing a role along with the BNB dominance. That's another part of the puzzle that you have that we all have to be honest with ourselves about because that bnb dominance has only increased from year to year to year it started off in 2024 as very small very trim basically zero because it wasn't even there but then as time progressed you see it's at, it was at 0 0.08 percent at one point and as time progressed it got to one percent during that next bitcoin having period and then got up to four percent as a high and it just kept on it kept that consistency got up to five percent and it's been holding that 2.9 or 2.2 percent to three uh, three point one percent um area so that's great and i could go on to say that bnb will hit a dominance of nine to ten percent in the next bitcoin having period and if it does that, if it does that, it's going to look good. Why would I state that, though? It's because of what I've seen Tether do is what I've seen XRP do. Now, XRP could have been at 10% and stayed at 10% for a while. There was actually at one point, I'm trying to find it, but they were at 13%. And they were loving it. There it is, 13%. Boom, there it is, 13%. And they were loving it, but then the SEC came in with a court case and that killed it. If the SEC does not come into, if their court case against Binance does not affect their token, it's going to look good. It's going to look perfect. And Binance is right now winning and dominating in very flashy ways, but so was XRP dominating the SEC in very flashy ways, but the SEC has money to throw to prolong cases and yeah yeah talk about a headache y'all this is the script of legend signing out i love you all y'all have a blessed one stay safe peace